hello welcome if you're new here if you're not welcome back please if you have subscribed hit that notification bell button the one written all yeah so that you can be notified whenever i post new and other amazing videos yeah so in this video i'm going to be telling you some of the identification tips you can identify whether a snake is venomous or not and also how to determine the sex of a snake whether it's female or male and then lastly we are going to go into the main topic which is the venomous snakes found here in kenya and africa so stay tuned and thank you and if you haven't watched the part one of the venomous snakes found in kenya and africa whoa you are really really missing a lot there is a lot of content that is in that video you need to watch hurry up go watch it then come and watch this amazing part two so before going into the main theme of this video i want to briefly explain to you some of the ways you can identify if this snake is a venomous snake or not venomous and another thing i want to share with you is how to know or determine as the sex of this snake whether it is female or male because just looking at it by the naked eyes it is hard for you to know unless you do these simple things so on the identification tips of determining whether this snake is venomous or not venomous the first one is the behavior and habitat of the snake you can be able to know if a snake is venomous if you observe its behavior and also when you check where it stays where where yeah it's habitat in general but this one needs an expert in this field so as to be able to distinguish these yeah and then the second one is coloring also coloring of the snake yeah determines can be able to help you to determine whether this snake is venomous or not and the third one is the head the head most venomous snakes especially the vipers they usually have a triangular shaped head yeah so most of the non-venomous snakes usually have a more of a rounded head but if the non-venomous snakes are facing danger or they want to keep off predators they usually mimic the triangular shaped head of the venomous snakes so it is also uh, not guarantee and also not all venomous snakes have a triangular shaped head and then the fourth one are the pupils we call we have this pupil called the elliptical eye it is found mostly in the viper family have you ever seen a cat a cat it has that straight line katikati macho in the eyes that slit in the eye is what we call the vertical pupil so most snakes especially the venomous one and the viper ones they have that vertical pupils here yeah? but then non venomous ones you'll find them mostly with rounded pupils so so far so good i hope that we are riding the same boat so the second thing i want to share with you is how to determine the sex of a snake whether it's female or male i'm gonna give you just two simple methods but you need the first method you really need to have maybe both male and female so that you can do the comparison so first and foremost what you need to know is that all snakes have something called a cloaca so a cloaca is generally the hole where birds and reptiles lay their eggs from and pee and also use it like generally as a vagina and a bat at the same time it's just one hole doing multiple tasks so basically now you will use something called the tail to determine whether this this snake is male or female but if the the snake is still a newborn it's a bit hard to determine whether the, your snake is male or female so you have to wait for it to be a bit mature if you cap adolescent stage kiasi so basically the male and female snake have different shaped tails their tails don't look similar if you observe closely 
So the tail starts after the cloaca, where the cloaca has just ended is where the tail starts. So the cloaca is generally found along the underbelly side. So for the females, they lack this thing called a hemipen, a hemipenis. Or in other words, because that word is too difficult for me to pronounce all the time, I'll just call it a penis. The females lack a penis, so their tails tend to be skinnier and they fade evenly until to the tail end. So, and for the males, their tails tend to be thicker, yeah? And they stay thick until they quickly come to a point at the very end of their tails. So that is one way you can identify a male and a female snake. And the second one, the second way is through the probing method. So basically, probing is just a process that involves sticking an instrument into your snake's cloaca so, so as to determine whether they have a hemipenis or not. It is important when you're probing your snake, you ensure that you have the correct sized probe and that it has a rounded tip. And if your snake is smaller in size, make sure you use a thinner rod for that. And if the snake is larger, you can use a larger rod for doing the probing method. What one does is that you insert the probe inside the cloaca of the snake then you do it slowly and gently spinning that probe so as you move forward so if this if if the snake is female the probe will stop this is because it will be stopped by a harder surface approximately when you're around three scales inside but if it is a male you will notice the probe going more and more deeper yeah that is around nine scales so that is how you can differentiate a male from a female and lastly if snakes are fully grown you can also know majority of snakes if snakes are are fully grown you can know whether it's male or female because female tend to be a bit larger in size than the males yeah with an exception of the cobras so we are done with that section so we are now going to go into the second venomous snake which is the eastern green mamba so to jog your memory a little just know that we have four species of mambas and in my first video i spoke about the black mamba which is the most deadliest snake in africa in kenya and one of the deadliest snake in the whole world and then the second one is the one i'm going to be speaking of today which is the eastern green mamba and the third one is the jameson's mamba which is mostly found in the central africa west and the west africa and sometimes you can find it in east africa and then lastly we have the western green mamba this one is native to the west africa alone it is not found in any other part so among these four mambas it is only the black mamba that has very toxic venom yeah but the other three their venom tends to be less toxic but still they are very dangerous and an interesting fact about all these mambas is that during the mating period males usually tend to compete by doing ritual dances or having wrestling contests on the ground this one is with an aim to force the other counterpart or the rival to to go down so that it can be able to win and be able to get this female and this dance or this competition may take several hours for it to end other names of the eastern green mamba can be the common mamba the white mouthed mamba or simply just the green mamba it is an arboreal snake which means that it dwells on trees. Yeah, that is where it basically dwells and thrives in. It is hard for you to find it on the ground. Yeah. So I was like imagining you're seated under a tree and then this snake slowly appears 
and then comes then reaches where you are what would you do <laughs> so just know that it loves dense vegetation yeah where there are a lot of trees and also that because of its green color yeah that it uses camouflage yeah so as to be able to keep off predators they got slender bodies with adult female averaging up to a length of up to two meters whereas the males average to a length of up to 1.8 meters their head is said to be coffin shaped and they got medium sized eyes with round pupils so their primary preys are the small mammals and the adults usually tend to eat adult birds or the eggs of the birds, some rodents and birds, whereas the small ones you can find them eating the small lizards or the chameleons here. Yeah? They are egg-laying snakes and they usually lay around 6 to 18 eggs in rotting vegetation. They are shy, they are not aggressive, and they are only likely to attack you when they feel provoked or cornered. Yeah? And these snakes are diurnal, diurnal, meaning that they are active during the day, but you can find them on the ground maybe when they are chasing after a prey or maybe when they want to bask in the sun so, because you know they are cold-blooded. Their venom is neurotoxic in nature, which generally means that it attacks the central nervous system and affects the cardiopulmonary function. Yeah, and its bite it shows two puncture marks. Yeah, and there will be no little or no swelling at the bite wound. Other symptoms of the bite may be dizziness, nausea, irregular heartbeat, convulsions, accompanied by difficulty in breathing and swallowing, which may actually rapidly progress to respiratory paralysis lastly these snakes are found in the coastal lowland tropical rainforest coastal bushlands the dunes and also the mountain forests and the third snake is the puff adder which has recorded the most number of fatalities than any other snake so this snake if you do not treat the venom correctly it is likely to lead to infection yeah and because of its high camouflage nature it like literally looks like the soil or sand yeah so when you are walking on sandy areas or arid areas make sure you're careful on where you're stepping because you might step on this snake and trust you me it will not spare you it will bite you head on it has two very enlarged fans yeah with its powerful venom able to kill a full-grown man with just a single bite the name puff adder resulted in its habit of inflating itself and hissing when threatened yani in a jifurisha and then it produces a very strong hissing sound this one is a sign of a very strong warning that you should just back off before it bites you yeah and this snake is generally a luggish or sluggish snake yeah and it moves in a straight line unlike other snakes yeah how they move yeah and this snake guys is kashoti it is not that tall in length it can grow up to a maximum of only one meter yeah and its venom is cytotoxic in in nature meaning that it leads to swelling and severe cell destruction like it destroys destroys your cells so if your tissue gets very much destroyed you're likely to get amputated be it the leg be it a hand yeah because now that part of the body is no longer of use yeah it will just keep rotting so this snake is really dangerous guys so this these snakes usually give live birth to young ones, yeah? And this is a nice way of avoiding predation of their eggs. So generally, there are three ways in which all snakes reproduce. One way is just by the laying of the eggs. Second way, giving live birth. And the third way is a combination of the two whereby the snakes usually hold the eggs internally and then they wait for them to hatch and then they give live birth. These are nocturnal snakes, meaning that they are more active during the night, so they prefer to ambush their prey rather than chase it. 
their head is almost triangular in shape and their colors may range from dull yellow to light brown at times orange to reddish brown and for the males they may be goldish they may have goldish color patterns they are generally found in rocky grasslands and they are also very good swimmers and they can also climb these snakes breed once yearly and their breeding season is usually mostly from october to december and they can give birth to around 20 to 41 offspring here yeah? and they become independent just from birth right from birth and when they become sexually reproductive is at the age of four years for both male and female and they can live to a maximum number of years of up to 16 years in captivity as now we are going to the cobras and did you know that there are those cobras that spit and their spit or their saliva is what has venom in them yeah you'll get to know them so i will be talking about the three types of the spitting cobras and the first type is the red spitting cobra these species are widespread in the dry country of the eastern and northern kenya and primarily in habitats like the dry savanna and the semi-desert areas of east africa and their venom contains a mixture of neurotoxins and cytotoxins yeah but more of neurotoxins so they target the shiny surface here yeah, of your body and that is the eyes so the eyes they get into the cornea of the eye the cornea is just the transparent window over the eye yeah and when it gets into the cornea you will feel pain and sometimes it will lead to permanent blindness so some of the first aid measures you should take once you have been spit by this snake is wash your eyes thoroughly with water or milk or if you don't have any of the above use urine yeah? and then afterwards make sure that you see a doctor so these species vary in color most of them are usually somehow red in color others can be orange red in color the one found in the southern part of kenya and they usually have a dark blue or a black throated band yeah so those are some ways you can be able to identify these snake they lay eggs they lay about 6 to 21 eggs and they are terrestrial um, snakes very fast and alert too adults are usually nocturnal while the children or the juveniles are usually um diurnal that is they're active during the day and this is because these snakes are usually cannibalistic in nature they eat other snakes and that is why you find there is this difference between the juveniles and the adults they they don't meet because these juveniles uh they might be eaten by the by the adults especially if it's not its children it might tend to eat the other small snakes and its size is usually 1.5 meters that is around 60 inches in maximum length and their diet consists of frogs rodents birds and even some other snakes so the fifth snake or the second subcategory of the spitting cobras is the brown spitting cobra and it is also known as the giant spitting cobra and it is native to africa and this is one of the world's largest species of the spitting cobras here in Kenya, they are found in the dry lowlands of northern and eastern Kenya, and its average length is about 1.3 to 2 meters. Though there are some cases which you have, they have been reported to the, to be more than 2 meters. You can find others more than 2 meters. So this snake is capable of injecting a larger volume of venom in a single bite compared to the other spitting cobras and it has both neurotoxic and cytotoxic kind of venom. The color is usually brown but depending on the geographical region where it has been found it may vary from dark brown to brown to even pale mustard even light gray. And the third category of the spitting cobras is called the black-necked spitting cobra and it is also our sixth snake for today. And these ones, they can grow up to a length of 1.2 to 2 meters in length, yeah, and they are mostly found in the sub-Sahara part of Africa. Their venom is neurotoxic and it irritates the skin. It may cause blisters and inflammation and can even cause permanent blindness if it comes in contact with your eyes and if you do not wash them.
just from their name they're supposed to be having a black neck around the neck but their coloration also and markings they vary considerably varying on the geographical region and they usually target smaller preys like the small rodents they are found in the western eastern central and parts of south africa yeah and they are very excellent tree climbers yeah? and may be found also in termite moons and they may lay about 10 to 15 eggs but can also lay again from anywhere between 8 to 22 eggs at a time their gestation periods last about 90 to 100 days but once the eggs are laid they hatch in 60 to 70 days the accuracy of their speed man it's so perfect and accurate one drop of their venom can aim up to seven meters yeah that is equivalent to 23 feet and if you compare a spitting cobra that has been captively bred and the one that is in the wild the one in the wild generally is prone to be nervous and is just prone to spitting a lot than the one that is in captivity so that is good news meaning if you have a snake in captivity the more it is in captivity the more it is it stays there the more it becomes a bit docile and calm and the seventh snake we are going to be talking about is the mount kenya bush vipers yeah this one is endemic to kenya meaning that you cannot find it in any other place geographical region apart from kenya and here in kenya it is found in the forests of chuka and south eastern mount kenya and also in the igembe in the northern nyambeni range yeah this is also a viper family and automatically it has a large head which is triangular in shape with a very thin neck and it has very rough scales and variety of body markings and their color pattern consists of a greenish black to charcoal black ground color yeah and their average height for the adults is about 40 to 60 centimeters that is equivalent to 16 to 24 inches and a maximum total length of 70 centimeters that is 28 inches so they primarily feed on amphibians rodents and even small birds and their mode of reproduction again it is a viper just like the pafada so it gives live birth to young ones yeah and it can give birth up to 13 offsprings yeah and newborns may measure around 17 to 21 centimeters in total length and the eighth snake is called the kenya horned viper and this one is named that way because it has two little tiny horns on its head yeah and this one also is endemic to kenya just like the mount kenya bush viper third part about these two vipers is that they are vulnerable and they are in need of special protection due to poaching they are seriously being poached and they are on the verge of going extinct so they face threats from these habitat destruction and the illegal collection for the European and American exotic pet markets. And the ninth snake is called the boomslang. Boomslang means like it is a tree dwelling snake and it is extraordinarily very dangerous as well. Yeah. And these snakes, they do not have the front fangs like the other types of snakes that I have mentioned. These ones, their fangs are located at the rear part of the upper jaw at the back. So for this snake to bite you, hallelujah, it is rare unless it has been really, really, really cornered they have very large prominent eyes with a pear-shaped pupil yeah so don't confuse this snake with the mambas or the green mamba or the or the black mamba no just go look at the eyes you'll notice the difference yeah and its average length is about 1.2 and it can exceed to up to 1.8 meters yeah the male coloring is highly variable from that of the female yeah its color is usually ranging from black to bright green whereas that of females is usually a brown color they are egg laying snakes they can lay about 8 to 25 eggs and they are having they have great speed and agility yeah? and their diet mainly comprises of chameleons and they can also eat birds also with their eggs they can eat frogs they can eat lizards yeah and they swallow them whole
And the reason as to why I have said that this snake is extremely dangerous, it is because its venom is hemotoxic in nature, which means that it affects the body's natural blood clotting mechanism and which results in the bleeding of the internal organs. Imagine bleeding internally. And even you may not know, that is just slow death. And it can take as long as 24 hours before you even feeling these symptoms. And imagine, guys, once this venom starts working on your body, you start bleeding with every hole in your body, be it the eyes, ears, nose, name them. So, but don't be scared. It's really interesting learning these things. And the tenth snake, guys, is the twig snake. This is also a back fanged snake, just like the boom slang, yeah. And this one also, it is rare for it to bite you, just like the boom slang. They rarely bite, yeah. But these snakes, they are very small and they are very narrow creatures who they take their name from highly effective camouflage. These guys can really camouflage well. They look similar to sticks and twigs yeah on trees that is why it was named the twig snake so when this snake is on a tree or on on, on a near a stick or a twig it is hard for you to know it is there unless you look really really closely if you would like to encounter such a snake or capture this one this snake in future go look for it in caves or near caves that is where you can find them because they are fond of bats yeah and another scary part about this snake guys it's venom it's anti-venom has not yet been found till date so when this snake just bites you my goodness just say your last prayers call your brother your sister your uncle and just tell them goodbye and the 11th and last snake you're going to be discussing is the egyptian cobra and this is one of the largest cobra species found in africa after the forest cobra they can live up to 30 years in the wild yeah and these snakes are used as a symbol of sovereignty um royalty deity and divine authority in the ancient egypt yeah and so the neck of this species yeah it has very long cervical ribs yeah capable of expanding to form a hood especially when it is cornered or when it feels like it is being threatened yeah the average length of this snake is around 1.4 meters and its maximum length can go up to 2.5 meters these snakes are front fanged and they got solid teeth in both jaws yeah and they have a round pupil as well and they are also terrestrial snakes yeah and these snakes they do not give birth they lay eggs and they can lay between 8 to 20 eggs and you will find them mostly in termite mods and the surprising thing or interesting thing about these snakes also is that males are usually larger than females but across their neck they have a broad black band yeah and these snakes also they are very venomous and their venom is primarily neurotoxic and also cytotoxic so thank you for watching i will not go further but just know there are so many venomous snakes out there i can't really exhaust them in this one video we have another one like the east african gutter snake but this one you should not even be scared about it so much because if it bites you you just suffer from slight pain and maybe a little swelling here and there and some headaches but it is not that venomous like it doesn't kill people and it is also not an aggressive snake we have another one like the rhombic night adder we have the vine snake we have the gabon viper we have wrinkles among so so many more thank you for watching please be sure to give it a like and please turn on the notification bell bye